Hello everybody, welcome for another episode of Mondays with Matem. Today we are going to have a little bit different episode. I'm going to introduce you to some of the brilliant minds that we have here at Vimats, so that you can have a choice of people whom you would like to ask questions and then with some of them we'll make a full episode next. Today first here with us we have Tomislav Lugaric, uh, who is responsible for the software development. Uh, in uh, Rimac. We will go to other guys on their desks uh, and their working places to ask them questions, but as we have grown and we became scattered around in different locations, the software development is actually in another building, so Tomislav came for us here instead of us going there, so thanks Tomislav. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Sure, so thanks for the opportunity. Basically, all the high-level software that the driver sees, so all the interactions with the car goes through our software, also, we develop all the software that tracks the car in real time, both for the engineers and for our owners. So we literally have everything from doing the operating system, the applications, hardcore C++, mobile apps, cloud apps, web apps, you name it, we have it. And it's really fun to do a challenge to build a computer that goes 400 kilometers per hour and just feels great. But that's not all the software that we are doing, right? There's other guys who do other kinds of software. Yeah, so basically we are just a small part, but the part that the drivers see the most. So it's really a tough challenge. We need to interface with autonomous driving, with low-level ECUs, with third-party services. There's always a ton of challenges. As you can hear, there's lots of stuff that we are doing that Tomislav and his team are working on. Uh, really interesting, cool-looking stuff the user interface and all that kind of things, connectivity over the air, software updates to the car. And we need help. We need you guys to join us to help us accelerate that development. So please don't wait for the next episode with Tomislav, apply. Maybe you'll meet him in person before the episode goes out. Also, we have cookies. <laughs> <laughs> We are now in our carbon fiber production department, actually in a part of it which is the lamination, where we laminate the carbon fiber onto the molds. Here with us we have Richard, who is leading the department. So Richie, what are you doing here? Well, we make all the parts from the carbon fiber in here. So parts for a car, parts for battery packs, and basically everything what's made from carbon fiber we're doing here in this department. And right here next to us we also develop the tooling, right? Yeah. Here we have team who are developing the tooling and the ply kits and everything what is needed to produce. So you get the CAD data and the design from the engineers and the designers. You develop the tool. The tool is made in the CNC. You make the negative out of it, laminate, autoclave, out of the autoclave painting, right? Yeah, everything in the <laughs> Here. 100 meters yeah, <laughs> away. So you can um, ask Richie anything you like about carbon fiber and production of carbon parts, whether it's a button or a battery pack housing or whatever. This is one of our colleagues from South Africa, uh, Gerard or Gerhard, depending where you're coming from. I grew up in Germany, so for me, you're Gerhard. Yeah, so in South Africa, it's Gerhard. Over here, it's Gerhard. In Germany, it's Gerhard. So can you tell us a little bit what you're doing here? Uh, I'm vehicle dynamics engineer at Trimats, of course. Um, so I'm basically taking all the info from all the other departments, integrating it into a vehicle model, and then running like performance simulations of the vehicle. And then you can evaluate the performance of the vehicle and then maybe correlate it to some test data. Um, so the test engineer would come back to us and then give us data and then we can compare it to our model and then update the model and correlate it. And the uh, things that look like video games on your screen, you're promising it's not games, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's usually just for display purposes, but yeah, the data is what matters for us. You can ask Harald, Gerard, Gerhard, whatever you like, not maybe just engineering stuff, but maybe how it was to move from one side of the planet to the other side of the planet and how it is to live in Croatia or anything you like. Yeah, I look forward to your questions, guys, so bring them in. Here we are in our design department, where we are developing the car, but also the user experience. And Luca is one of the graphic designers uh, who is doing the user uh, experience and the infotainment screens for the car. And he's getting a lot of pain from my comments. So maybe, Luca, can you explain a little bit what you are doing here? I'm the manager for UX and UI department. We do all of the screens inside of the vehicle, all the infotainment screens. This is mostly prototypes, user flows, 
and of course after that UI with the um, support from a little bit from uh, the graphic team. And then you export what you are basically doing to the software team which then make it yeah. work on yeah. the hardware. Yeah, of course. So the integration to make it possible what these guys are making on the screen uh, to make it then work on the actual hardware, that's not always easy because the car is of course limited with processing power it can give for the infotainment and so on. So there's lots of interesting challenges, not just on the design side, but also on the technical side. So now you know who Luca is and you can ask him anything you like. This is Sasha Vražić. He's the head of our autonomous driving department. So we have, as a relatively small company, a fully fledged autonomous driving development department, developing our driving coach. And we will have a video soon about the driver coach, which will come out in a couple of days from now, uh, where you will see what we are actually working on. But in the meantime, maybe Sasha, you can say a little bit about what you guys are doing here. We are developing the driver coach system, but we started the story from selecting the sensors, uh, setting up uh, the car, it's a special car. We are working on the algorithm like the motion planning, the perception, the localization and the driver monitoring and working on keeping the safety for uh, all the occupants. So basically the idea is to enjoy the vehicle, to have fun, but be safe and uh, learn how to drive and enjoy the car. Yeah, while well, other, I would say, similar departments that are working on autonomous driving are doing uh, things on very low speeds and like uh, to keep you safe in a regular driving condition. Here we are doing it as always in Emacs a little bit more crazy at a little bit higher speeds up to 350 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that will be interesting and you'll find out soon more about it. But if you have any question, let us know and Sasha will answer all of them for you. Yeah, we'll try to. <laughs> yeah. As you saw, we find this so important that we pulled Anna out of a meeting, very important meeting. Very uh, important. So Anna is uh, here uh, heading the control engineering department and they're doing many things like state of charge, state of power algorithms to determine what the battery can do and which state the battery is. But maybe the coolest thing that most people here would be interested in is also the torque factor in development. So Anna, maybe you can tell us just a couple of things about what you're doing here. We are uh, modeling and developing um, controls um, that control the, the way vehicles should behave. So the guys that usually sit here uh, are doing just that. So without them, the car wouldn't be able to, to drive or to brake. And they also own features like traction control or uh, throttle pedal mats and similar. And then we also have battery control algorithms, as you mentioned. So we're estimating state of charge and state of health and power limits. And then, of course, there is torque vectoring. So is it more like physics, mathematics? It's both and controls. It's basically uh, predicting how the vehicle will behave based on some models of the vehicle. And then we're uh, calculating optimal torques on each wheel. Don't say any more because this is not. just an introduction <laughs> okay. so that people know what you are generally doing. And now they can ask anything to go more into details about the really specifics, anything that you would like to know from Anna. If I can ask a question, I would ask you about the drift mode. Great. <laughs> you should probably ask about something else, maybe like battery control algorithms or something similar. That's also very interesting. I'll leave it for somebody else. This is our next employee we want to show you. So you can apply to the company also if you have a fur and four paws. Just kidding. We are here actually for Matja Barishin. Hey, Matja. Hey. Matja is leading our battery cell research team here. Uh, so Matja, tell us a little bit about what you're doing here. Okay, I can tell a lot, but I'll keep it short because I know you're on a tight schedule. So basically what we do here is supplying the best cell option for all of our uh, ongoing projects and projects that are in a pipeline. So we're trying always to do the best. To do so, we need to do a lot of research, cell-related research. Uh, we have to have the great overview of the cell market, so we have to stay in touch with all the cell suppliers. We are always seeking for the new cell suppliers. We have a lot of cell level tests uh, and we are doing the cell modeling, we are doing the uh, physics based modeling, uh, experimental based modeling. So we are trying really to do our best to support you guys on the, <laughs> on the long term and the short term. So we are 
not making our own cells and yep, correct. we don't plan to do so, but we still have to know the cell in very... It's, yeah, yeah. So we are always trying to know, uh, learn as much as we can on the cell level. As I said, we are going on, uh, on the electrochemical level. We do a lot of simulation to understand it on the, on, the, on the complete, on the highest level. And then we communicate this with the cell suppliers, trying to, you know, do all these small modifications to improve uh, the project on the high level. So we do changes in the can, on the chemistry, on the separator, electro, so stuff like that. So and really then cool we stuff. sometimes also work with the cell manufacturer to make a custom cell, which Correct. is according to our specifications, according to our package, volume, chemistry. Correct. Yeah, even can material. So it depends on the interconnection, what we do with the bus bars, what we do with, with the cooling. Different cooling requires different can materials. It depends always on the performances, of course. So. Yeah, it's a long story. So now anybody can ask you a question regarding yeah. your job. Yeah. But of course, competitors, we will not give away anything. <laughs> well, yeah. We will almost everything. If you feel you can help, feel free to join. We have a few open positions for our department. So if you have some questions, feel free to ask them. And yeah, thanks for the introduction, Mate. Thanks, Matja. Thanks. That was it for today. Now you saw the people that you can ask more questions. And there's, of course, many, many more colleagues here with Rimac. We are 700 people, so uh, I hope that you can see more of them in the future. But this gives you a glimpse of a few maybe interesting topics that you can address. And then we will be very happy to go more into the details of the things that you like most. Thank you.